Okay, up to this point, it may seem that if you're going to have, say, like 30 or 40 jigsaw puzzles in this game, that it's an awful lot of work because, uh, say, there's going to be 50 pieces per puzzle. We already said that you line those up manually, and that might seem like that's going to be a lot of work. But you only have to do it once because what you can do is you can actually assign multiple sprites to these objects, and then you simply have a variable that says which one to display. So let's go through that. So the first thing we have to do is let's create a very basic level select screen. And to do that, we need to create a new scene. So go to File, New Scene. And let's just quickly make um, create empty and level one. text add mesh text mesh level one and let's bring the size down so it's not blurry make the font fairly large and choose Arial Add component, physics 2D, box collider. And it's a trigger. All right, so that's everything that we need for the object itself. I'll copy that, paste it, call this level two text. And we simply change the text to level 2. So now we just need to create a quick little script that makes these clickable. So right click, create, C sharp, and we'll call it level select. We'll open that. Okay. And we need to add a line up here using system. Oops. So using Unity Engine stop, uh, dot scene management, that will enable some new commands. All right. So on the outside of start, outside of update, let's add void on mouse down. So if the mouse is clicked, left clicked, on the object that the script is attached to, we want something to happen. Well, it's going to be attached to two different objects. So so if game object dot name equals equals level one text basically what we're going to do is we're going to load the puzzle scene but we're going to change one variable so Let's create a new static variable. So public static. Uh, we'll call it which level. Public static. Um, you can use an int.
which level equals 1 if you're clicking on the level 1 text. If you click on the level 2 text, then which level should be 2. And regardless of which one you click on, we're going to do scene manager dot load scene and we called it puzzle one so even though it's called puzzle one it's going to be used for multiple puzzles okay so let's go ahead and save that now what we need to do is we need to have this value be looked at by the other script the script that is attached to all the individual puzzle pieces so let's go ahead and save scene as uh, we'll call it main puzzle menu all right so you only want the choice of a picture to be uh, d to, to be decided when the puzzle first loads. So if you've noticed what I've done is I've brought in a new picture. So what we're going to do is first of all it's important to note that's exactly the same diameter or resolution of this one. So this one was 14 by 900. This is also 14 by 900. So we're going to break it up just like we did the other one. So we go to multiple, apply that, and then we choose Sprite Editor, Slice, Grid by Cell Count, and we said it is going to be 5 by 5. So, since I start with exactly the same size and break it up by the same amount, that means the pieces, if everything is working as intended, should be the same size. Now, what we have to do is in the move piece script, we're going to create a new variable. So, public, and we'll call it, um, has to be a sprite, so it's a public sprite. We'll call it stage two image. Now, since this is not static, that means the image will be different for each and every um, for each and every piece, which is exactly what we want. So let's go to puzzle one, and yes, save the changes we made to that menu. And what you're going to do is if you click on the puzzle pieces you'll see that they now have that new stage 2 image so A1 should be the top image A2 should be the second A3 is the third a4 is the fourth, and so on and so forth. B1. Okay, so that's enough for example. So now we've assigned multiple images to the puzzle piece. One is the default and then the next one is this variable. So it's probably uh, pretty clear what we're going to do is that if you have 10 different puzzles then you just have to add another variable so stage 3, stage 4, stage 5 and just keep splitting up the image and dragging and dropping it. 100% of the code will continue to work. You don't have to line these up again because you're using exactly the same scene. You'll see how this works in just a minute because we're almost done. So now what we have to do is, like I said, is in start, we have to determine what uh, image is used. So since 
this is set as the default image. So uh, the level one picture is set as the default image. Then when this is set to level uh, to number one, we don't have to make any changes. But if it's set to number two or anything else, then we do. So if um, if level select dot which level equals equals did I use text? No, I just used numbers. Equals two. Then something needs to happen. And what's going to happen is get component dot sprite renderer dot sprite equals stage two image. And once again, this demonstrates why having um, non-static variables is so important because this one command will change all of the objects it's attached to to the proper image because you've already given them their individual corresponding image. So, last thing, for scene management commands to work where you're loading scenes, you have to go to file, you have to go to build settings, you have to make sure the right images are in here, uh, the right, excuse me, the right scenes are in here. So these we're going to delete because this is part of a separate project. And we're just going to drag and drop these in here. Okay. And I believe that's all it should take. So we go to main puzzle menu. No error. Oh, I don't think I attached the script. I did not. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and attach the script. So level one, and it loads just like it should. Okay, let's run it again. Level two, bingo. You now have a new fully functioning puzzle and all you had to do was add a couple lines of code and uh, just drag and drop the new images. So all the busy work that you're gonna have to do where you line all these images up, you only gotta do that once. To, to make this a fully functioning uh, game, you just have to uh, import the new image and then drag and drop the individual pictures onto them. You don't have to do this whole lining up all over again. And um, so really that's about all I wanted to show in this demo. Uh, so basically you would just be building out this. You would add stage three image, stage four image, stage five image. Um, and in this you would also add a corresponding if which level equals three, if which level equals four, if which level equals five and then you'd bring in the corresponding variable there. Um, the only other thing is, of course, on the level select, you need the ability to actually select uh, all those levels. So that should about do it. Um, so I think that's it.